Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling and Dash for today, the 8th of August. We're looking at Jeremiah chapters 1 and 2, also John chapter 10. I'm calling this one Our Shepherd. And I'm going to ask you, dear, to open us with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us, Lord. Thank you for watching over us. Um, we ask, Lord, that you help our words encourage others in their walk with you. Amen. Amen. So I'm calling this one Our Shepherd, and I'm pulling from John chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. You're pulling from Jeremiah. Okay, so they're not the same today. But this says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in full. So my observation today is Jesus is telling the Pharisees, and they're not getting it, they're clueless. The people that were educated book smart were lacking in the heart smart area. And so he was the shepherd and he's trying to describe this. The only way to have heaven is to believe in him, but they couldn't understand. And so Jesus finally says these words, you know, sheep and pen to describe heaven. But he goes on to say, um, at the end of it, I am the shepherd and I am here so that people may have eternal life. So he's trying to explain to them, but they're not getting it because they're thinking physical. So my application or how I'm made differently today, our shepherd is Jesus. And the only way to get to heaven is by believing in him. He was sent to earth as our last required sacrifice. We need to act like that. <laughs> It's not a by chance thing. It's by scripture. It's there. My prayer, Lord, thank you for opening my eyes and ears to you being our shepherd. Thanks for the reminder. Use us to reach others with this good news. Amen. Very good. I think also he goes on to say you're stupid. But anyway, well, that, that's not the King James Version or NIV or any of those. That's a David version. Well, I'm summarizing, paraphrasing. Okay. Um, I have two uh, different sets of scriptures I'm going to read. One is from Jeremiah 1, 4 through 6. The word of the Lord came to me, and this is Jeremiah speaking, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. At last, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. And then in John 10, verse 16, it says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and, they, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. My observation. In the beginning of Jeremiah, the Lord is calling Jeremiah to be a prophet. Jeremiah explains to the Lord why he could not do this. Basically, God replied with these words. Now, this is me paraphrasing. Before you were born, I knew you. I, the Almighty God who created the world and created you, I'm giving you a mission. I know what I'm doing. And in John, we are told that even though we are not Israelites or Jews, God has allowed us into his kingdom and new covenant is what you had talked about. And then what I really like about uh, when Jesus says that, uh, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. It just, oh, he's talking about us. So everyone in the world has a chance to accept Jesus as their savior. My application, how will I be changed by what I read today? At first, it sounds comical that Jeremiah, like Moses, argued with God and told God that they could not do what he is asking them to do. It could be low self-esteem or fear speaking, but in both cases, God basically says, yes, you can do it. I am God and I'm calling you to do this. Excuses do not work with God. So what is God asking me to do and I do not feel I have the ability to do it? Well, right now, I do not know. However, I learned something from a mentor many, many, many years ago. Sometimes God reveals part of something to you, like in this case, the question is being asked, what is God asking me to do? And I do not feel I have the ability to do it. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thought into my mind and think about it, but not dwell on it and wondering, why don't I have an answer to that? I'm just gonna put it in my mind and leave it there. Then out of nowhere, the answer will come to my mind. I know the answer will come because God is faithful. I just need to keep an open mind and open communication with God. As for the application in John, I can easily explain to non-believer that God wants everyone in his kingdom. My prayer, thank you, Lord, for loving me enough to continue teaching me and directing my paths. Amen. Very nice. Well, like I said, I just, you know, we read it twice a year where Jesus says, I have other uh, sheep that are we not... We read through the New Testament twice a year, and we read the Old Testament once a year through the light journaling reading plan. Right, and we read that, and it just, it's such a comforting thought that Jesus says, you know, he does, I'm thinking, he's, it doesn't say he says these exact words that, um, well, I want everyone to know that everyone can come, so I'm going to put this little scripture in there that says, I have other sheep that are not of this flock. And to me, that is so comforting. It is. And yet, it's also sad because we know some people aren't taking this warning seriously. No, they're not. But what do we do? Okay, we can pray for them. We can have discussions with them. We can have relations in that we're making contact with them, you know, over a period of time. Uh, relationships can happen one cup at a time as we share coffee together or just go for walks or talking. And then also, by us living out our lives, being the light, what has happened to us in the past is people have come to us when they've had those moments where life has fallen apart for them and things are happening. And I'm laughing because it, now it's over with. But at the time, you remember when we were teaching in Okinawa and the lady came to park next to my vehicle and instead of parking next to my vehicle, she ran into my vehicle in the parking lot and it was raining really bad. But she was faced with a, can a cancer diagnosis, had to sell her home in another country, and she was retiring. It was like a triple whammy, whammy, a triple thing happening at the same time going, wow. I know that she was coming to school and the first thing she was going to do was look you up and ask for prayer. She was because she did not go to church. and uh, But yet when the storm clouds came, she sought me out because I was a teacher and a pastor, not in the same location, but she knew that I was a spiritual guy. And so she was going to come to see me as quickly as she could. And because <laughs> of the rain, she slid into the car you know, that kind of thing. And I told her, let's get out of the rain, let's pray about this first, and then we'll call the police. Because nobody was in the vehicles at that moment, so it wasn't like a, a threat of life. So the first thing, and she was open to praying with me, oddly enough. So tomorrow we're gonna to be looking at Jeremiah chapters three and four, also John chapter 11. And I'm gonna ask you, dear, to go ahead and close this out with prayer. Lord, we know that you love us so much lord and that you have called us all to you and we we just have to be willing to accept that call lord that you want to be the shepherd of our life lord and lord i ask that um for any of us lord who that you're calling us to do something and we're thinking wait i don't have that skill i don't have that ability or i'm afraid or whatever lord that you uh, that we respond to you even though i feel this way lord i will go and do what you say lord because i know that you will help me through it so lord i just ask that you give encouragement and courage to to those who are listening lord so that they will continue to walk with you and to do what you have asked them to do in your precious name we pray amen amen